G'day folks, it's Rob here. Thought we'd do a little bit of a roundup on a few bits and pieces around our small little backyard farm. Uh, not a lot has really progressed garden-wise because we're still waiting on the landscapers due to weather and other delays. They um, haven't done the work in the backyard yet, so it'll be a couple more weeks before they get to have a crack, so we found out the other day. Uh, but yeah, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a look at the small things we have on the grow and also do a proper roundup on the aquaponics because the live streams last weekend were a bit dodgy. Sorry folks, had a few complaints about the quality. So yeah, I'll stop nattering on, flip the uh, camera on the phone around and give you a look at what's growing. So I'll give you a bit of a look at the uh, ginger and the containers to begin with. Uh, they're growing fairly well. Uh, the temperature has dropped a fair bit here. Uh, we're in the mid twenties at the moment. And generally the ginger I've found uh, tends to die back when it starts to get below 25 Celsius. Uh, but these guys here, hopefully, will yeah, grow a little bit longer because they're on the end of the deck north is over that way uh, so they will be getting pretty much all sun all winter if they decide to continue to grow so we're just going to play it by ear at the moment we'll see if they um they like the position if they start to die back we'll harvest them i'll give you a bit of a look at the rhizome uh, these guys that were started later they're doing so so and this is another batch that started later as well oh those little plants down in there are a seaside daisy and these are the original um plants and you might be able to tell that they're pull, pushing the pouch out over there. Uh, so they've definitely got a nice little bit of rhizome growing on under the surface down there. Oh, there's another little shoot. So pretty happy about that pouch. Uh, this pouch here, same thing. It's pushing out against the side there. A nice load of um, ginger. I mean, look at the size of that ginger there against my finger. And these guys here have also thrown a load of little flowers. There we go. Now the phone's focused. Give you a bit of an idea on what these little flower heads look like. Not as, specta as spectacular as the ornamental ginger, but still pretty little orchid-like flowers. And this one here has um, got that seaside daisy in it and a load of little flower heads. Uh, just to give you a look at what these seaside daisies look like. I'll pull this flower through. There we go. A nice pretty little white flower. These are all just self-sown from some other plants that were growing up on the deck. Um, but yeah, this one here has a really nice large bits of ginger growing above the surface. And same as this one over here. And as you can see again, it's um, distorting the pouch with the amount of rhizome that's pushing out down the edge there. So these guys are growing really well. Oh, and this one here, um, it threw a nice big tall flower spike. It's about a metre or three foot above the, um, the deck there. So really happy with the way these guys are going. Uh, if you do want some information on growing ginger, um, I'll leave a playlist um, up in the corner and down in the description if you want to check that out. Um, yeah, just on how we've grown ginger, um, the one clip will look at um, ginger generally and the other one just how I've been growing these ones. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, the other plants up here are all growing on a little Ikea table we got just in root pouches in a tray to stop any water dripping down. Over the back here we have some basil and thyme that I mentioned I think in the uh, live chat last week, the hangout. Um, they're just some excess from the aquaponics I decided to pop in a pouch. Here we have our oregano and our Chinese chives. A lot of these have already gone to flower and we're collecting a lot of seeds from them. Uh, Bianca's decided to do that um, so we can just sow these guys out mainly because these chives are a lot tastier than the other chives we've been growing uh, a little bit more onion oniony in flavor so we've decided that these guys oh she's already done most of those seeds uh, these guys are the chives we'll be growing from now on uh, over here we have some dill uh, just a nice little dill excess that Mark gave us thank you very much mate uh, just growing up here hopefully a lot closer to the kitchen so we use it a lot more and these are our little garlic greens that we're growing. Haven't harvested them as of yet, but I dare say we're getting pretty close to harvest time for a couple of them. I just throw them in things like um, rice paper rolls and um, maybe fresh as a garnish on top of a uh, stir fry. People have asked me what they taste like. Well, um, we have cooked them in stir fries, but the flavors get lost. So I think I'll just use them as like a garnish or in a raw salad from now on. And over here is our nasturtium, giving us a bit of color up here. Also getting a lot of seeds set from these guys, which I want to save so we can plant them elsewhere around the patch. Uh, down here, just our mint, we just keep um, basically harvesting it back and um, letting it bounce back again. We do have some dried inside, but yeah, it's just so lush at the moment. It's a great time of year, autumn here. So we've just been coming out and nipping off leaves whenever we need them. Sorry about that, my gimbal went a bit gumby. Um, yeah, I was just saying that this, this stuff really does grow well in our autumn and spring. It tends to get caned a bit through summer. Um, but yeah, the, the pouches up here on the veranda are looking really good. 
and of course our rosemary this was a rosemary that was saved out of mum's aquaponic system when I took it down um, so yeah it's nice having this up on the deck it's just one of those plants you just like to rub the leaves so you can have a bit of a whiff here have a smell it's, uh, I love the smell of rosemary but that's pretty much all it for the deck uh, we'll pop down and have a bit of a gander at the aquaponics I think I've left it a little bit too late to shoot the video uh, they're doing flyovers at a local event today so that's the, um, the RAF um, aerial acrobatics team I forget the name, slip my mind for the moment but I'd say they'll be back over a few more times while I'm filming so I better get cracking now those planes have gone um, the chilies still seem to be doing okay with the existing fruit on there but they are dropping the newer fruit that are starting to form there's a couple of ripe ones on there we could probably knock off um, I've decided to use the plant itself as a trellis I popped in a couple of um, climbing beans down here one's taken off okay the other one's just only shot um, so hopefully they'll grow up nicely around the, um, the, the chili itself or maybe just even the steel pole there so there's a bit of strain on that I might have to fix that up in a minute oh yeah and just down in here um, that's what I mean just the little fruits are just dropping off it could be just the cooler night temps now just triggering it for the, to drop the leaves uh, the fruit sorry uh, down in here um, this is what happens when the fruit flies eat out the base of one of the chili fruits all the seeds fall down and we have a load of little chili plants that have just um, shot up here so um, I don't know how they'll go through winter I'll leave them go maybe keep the strongest one around here some of the lettuce I planted out from Mark thank you very much mate I think I showed this off in the live stream and I've also come back and um, taken some pity on some small cloves of garlic and I've popped them in here as well I think there's some more down this end but they haven't popped yet the chard there or perpetual spinach we haven't been harvesting a great deal of that but we have taken a few small handfuls off oh and uh, an aloe vera I took pity on I just popped that in there a while ago oh and so you do get weeds in aquaponics folks this is uh, one of the clumping grasses one of the seeds must have blown up in here so there you go um, you do get weeds every now and then in the system uh, the tomato I was talking about I was going to pull it out of the system and then I saw how healthy it was and how big these little uh, cherry tomatoes are so we might leave this fella in here but what I might do is try and set up some sort of a trellis or staking system and stop it from growing over the top of the bed here and just try and grow it up in a bit of a wall maybe out towards the back there to our nice tarped grass area and um, yeah try and save it that way and the sweet potato will be coming out and I will be doing both slips taking some slips off there and the root tuber itself and we'll see if we can overwinter it and then we'll either have slips to start off when spring comes or um, hopefully we might get a couple of roots set in the soil mix too I uh, might move around to the other side just around here at the eggplant and as you can see we still have the uh, little ladybug larvae running around the place uh, most of them though have started to pupate I tried to show this in the live stream last week there's one pupating there there's actually um, three pupating on this leaf and there's a couple more on um, some of these leaves up here so uh, they're doing a really good job of keeping the aphid levels down I haven't seen any um, or, so to speak of on the plants over here as of yet and none really on the eggplant so uh, fingers crossed um, there'll be enough hanging around to look after any of the soft shell um, pests like aphids and whatnot and we do have a couple of um, small eggplants on here there we go we've got some forming in there and I did notice there was another small one um, just starting off around the corner here somewhere so yeah pretty chuffed about that we will have a couple of eggplants through the cooler months uh, fingers crossed it'll be warm enough here for them to um, keep producing and here come the planes again Just a quick look at the garlic I planted out um, in last week's live stream they've all pretty much all started to pop I think there was another one up the end here I snuck in later yeah there we go he's um, a little bit shaded by the eggplant but hopefully it'll be all right uh, the other plants are taking off okay I did notice a little bit of um, chlorosis between some of the kale uh, the veins on the kale so I added some iron in this week uh, one thing we have started to get straight away are the eggs from the cabbage butterfly you might be able to see that little white speck down there and I know one of the kale leaves has got a load on it um, so I need to really keep them in check otherwise they will smash through these plants in no time flat 
Yeah, there we go. It was on the red Russian kale. There's what, three eggs there that I can see. I think I just squashed one with my thumb. So the best way to look after these guys is just to exclude them. But because of the way the system is set up, it's a bit hard to net off the whole area at the moment, um, especially since I don't have decent netting left. So I will be spraying these guys with Dipol. We've had a bit of rain again, um, so it needs to be reapplied. Uh, but hopefully we can keep them in check. I'll uh, just give you a quick look at your onions, John and Anita. Thank you very much again, folks. We're getting some nice growth out of here, these guys again, once they're transplanted in. So I'm sure they'll do fine. Um, yeah, the Egyptian walking onions. They look like they've um, made themselves at home nicely. And other than that, the system's going pretty good. Give you a bit of a gander at the fish. Hey, fish. They're going to come up and say good day. We'll toss a few pellets in for these guys, hey, and see if they want to come up and say good day. Uh, the water temperature has fallen a fair bit here. Uh, that one just came up and balked. Uh, the water temp has fallen a little bit here, so they are off the food a bit. Uh, they're not smashing it as much as they would. Uh, I think at the moment the water temp is sitting around about 22, 23 degrees. Uh, these guys really become active feed feeders above 24 degrees, I've found. Um, they're pretty, you know, casual when it comes to feed time at these lower temps. I might just actually um, check the water temp and see what it's sitting at. So yeah, it's sitting at 22 degrees. Um, I'm actually going to follow the guidelines of a more knowledgeable man, the perch man. G'day Bruce if you're watching. Um, and he suggested that maybe cut back on the pellets once the uh, water temp starts to drop below 20 degrees Celsius. And then start feeding him some of the leafy greens either from the system or somewhere else in the patch. And that'll hopefully, um, yeah, just keep them going through. But yeah, just cut down on the high protein feed while the water temperature is down and they can't metabolize it as easily. So they're yeah, pretty happy with how well they're feeding at the moment, actually. I thought they might be a little bit shy. So what we might do is we might leave these guys to it. And I'll just take you for a quick wander down the back. Don't know if I showed you this before, but that's the aquaponics pineapple. It's come out into a pouch just for now, just to give us some more brassica growing area. Uh, just a hodgepodge of other different things in pouches. Oh, the um, Okinawan spinach down there, that came from the aquaponics as well. I split it up, gave half to my daughter and her roommate. Um, hope it grows well for your tea. And this will get a cutting or two go back into the aquaponics come summer. But we just really needed the um, space for the brassicas at the moment. Uh, the chili over the back there is doing well. Can't really complain, and I hope yours are tasty, Greg. Had a supporter pop around today and he took a couple home, so hope you had a safe drive home, mate. Um, the garlic. Yeah, the garlic are doing really, really well. You can pretty much well tell the two different varieties. Down the front here we have the seed garlic starting from that plant there, over that way and then all down the front. Um, so far pretty much all, all of them have popped up. Uh, the garlic up the back are from an unknown supermarket variety that was grown here in Australia. A large purpley skin variety. Um, they looked like Glen Large, but you know, there's no guarantee that they would be. And the only one that took a while to pop up was this one here. But we also found um, some green leaves scattered on top. I don't know if it was a couple of bugs or caterpillars had a bit of a nibble on them, decided they didn't like them, but just left the, uh, the leaf section up there. But yeah, so far they're going okay. And the modified veggie pod is working well too. I've only had to top it up once uh, yesterday and I only literally put in a dribble before it started to overflow. So this soil down in here is nice and moist and um, charged up. So pretty happy with the way that that's gone. Sorry, little garlic. Right down the back here, we have our new black soldier fly farms. Thank you very much again, John and Anita. Uh, these were John's old ones. Uh, there's a couple of blowies in there at the moment because I popped some meat in earlier. Um, but we've had a load of black soldier fly in there as well. So hopefully um, they'll start to, the smaller maggots will start to take over soon. If not, no great loss. Dig a hole and bury it in the ground. Uh, generally speaking though, we have our black soldier flies all through winter, but it can't be guaranteed. So uh, funnily enough, we haven't seen any other maggots in there. And that all comes down to just the chemicals that the uh, black soldier fly larvae and the flies themselves exude it pretty much all just stops the other flies from breeding in there so we won't have problems with those maggots and just down here we have the only wicking bed that's really been planted out so far down the back here it's got some brassicas in there there's some brussels sprouts uh, thanks again mark and john and anita some uh, broccoli and a couple of collies and already they are being attacked by caterpillars and that there is a juvenile cluster caterpillar attack 
So with this bed here, and because of where it is, it's easy enough to um, pop a little bit of a netting over the top. So I'll probably um, use some of those cages there or some other extra cages we have. Pop it on top of here and put some veggie net on. I will have to make sure that there are no caterpillars on here before I put the net on. Otherwise, yeah, they're just going to go to town on everything in there. I also grabbed some mature flower heads from our marigold friends here. And I did a row of seeds down this side here and also along this side here. So hopefully we'll have some nice flowers um, pop up there. They'll be behind netting, so they may not attract many beneficials. But yeah, later on, once the netting comes off, they'll um, yeah, hopefully attract some beneficials. And yeah, that mar those marigolds are looking pretty cool. Our little um, potato barrels. We have all four have already um, sprouted in this one here. Our turmeric we're overwintering. And it looks like we've only had, oh no, all three. So we, this is one potato here, uh, two little bits of green, another one over here. And I just noticed there's a little um, leaf section there. So yeah, all three spuds there uh, through the first layer of soil. And we also have some volunteer warrigal greens, which I dare say that is as well. We'll take all these little weeds out. Uh, might as well take the warrigals out as well. We don't need them competing with the spuds at this point in time. And yeah, this uh, pouch here just has some top up soil that will go on top of these guys. Uh, not because they will um, set potatoes all the way up the stem, more so so we don't get any um, growing above the top of the soil and getting green on them. So there you go, folks. There's a bit of a roundup on what's going on in the backyard at the moment. And like I said, we're still waiting on the landscapers. So this soil patch area, it's um, not gonna be fully planted out until that work is done first, just in case some of those beds and the shade house uh, may need to be moved so they can do their bits and pieces. Uh, but I'm pretty confident everything should be able to stay where it is. Uh, and once it's done, we can grade the soil nice and flat and I can stick in the garden beds where I want them. Um, the aquaponics area, by the way, will be uh, the next job on the list after that. And it will be going behind me here where it was originally. And we're going to have a proper structure over the top of it and set up a couple of U-Butte systems there. So I'll be posting videos and whatnot on all that as it happens. But like everything, it takes time. So yeah, don't hold your breath, please, folks. A bit of um, a news, though, on another front. Um, it looks like I've partnered with a group of people who will be helping me make up some guides that I will have available. Um, um, some will be free, one or two may be free, uh, others will be paid for guides. Um, so that's what I'll be working on over the next couple of weeks. Figure I might as well do something constructive if I can't do a lot in the patch. So I'll be focusing a lot of time on that, uh, making content for those guides. And yeah, I'll release a clip and explain what's going on there once that's all done. Oh. I'm getting old, my foot's going to sleep. Um, but yeah, I will pretty much will wrap it up there, folks. I would like to thank you all for coming along and leaving your comments uh, down below the clips and thumbing them up. I really do enjoy chatting to you all and answering the short questions. Um, so please don't leave any curly ones down there. But yeah, feel free to leave any short little quick questions down there you have and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, special thanks to all you folks who do help us out through the supporters site farm your own yard and also the youtube membership program really do appreciate the support folks uh, but i will pretty much will leave it there i do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and your aquaponics and i will catch you next video cheers folks take it easy